Welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Nate, and today we're going to be talking about exercise. Specifically, what is the best type of exercise to burn more fat? And so to really dive into this at a high level, we're going to need to talk a little bit scientifically about the different types of movements, the different uh, energy pathways that the movements entail, like the way that we, uh, how we burn the energy to, to do the movement. So we'll try to get a little sciencey. We'll bring it back down so it's nothing crazy. But hopefully this will be very enlightening and keep you from making the mistake that so many people make when they start talking about how to um, burn more fat at the gym. And so most people, they think, let's burn some fat. Let's go, let's go to the gym. I'm on a weight loss program. I need to start doing exercise. The number one thing that people will go and do is cardio. Everyone goes and does cardio. So it's either it's on a treadmill, maybe it's an elliptical, we're on a bike reading a magazine. Maybe if you're getting crazy, you'll do the stairs or a versa climber or an assault bike. And then kind of the next tier is going to be a class. A lot of people are going to be jumping into a class. It's easy. Someone's telling you what to do. You don't really have to think about it. But a lot of times, if you're a high performer, you're going to be either in the gym at an odd hour where you don't necessarily have time to go at the, at the regular hours because you're at work, you're in sales, you're an entrepreneur, something like that. But also, we might, not even have, we might not have that full time period to actually go and do the workout. You might not have an hour because it's not just an hour, is it? You got you to gotta get up. You got to get ready for the gym. You got to drive to the gym. You got to put your stuff away. You got to warm up. You got to do your workout, actually. Then you cool down, you shower, you change, you drive back home. So a lot of time, if you're doing a class, it can take more than an hour. It can take like closer to two hours. So what's the right way to get as much done in the least amount of time possible to stay really, really efficient with your time and without doing any of that mind numbing cardio that so many people do? Because for a lot of people like cardio and that's fine. If you like cardio, then great. I hope you have a good time when you do it. But if you think that I need to lose weight, therefore I need to run and need to just gut through some just mind numbing running, get out there and just pound the pavement. I don't want you to have to do that. That's not actually the most effective use of your time or the most effective way to burn fat. So if, if you don't like it, I don't want you to have to do it just because you think that's the, the next move. So number one, let's talk about the, like the energy pathways just real quick. Okay. So for your body is chief goal in life is to keep your life going, is to keep you alive. Your body wants to keep you alive. And so to do that, it has a lot of cool tricks. So it wants to be really, really efficient. It wants to keep you not just alive, but also in the same state. That's why weight loss is, is tough. Weight gain, muscle gain is tough too, because your body's like, actually, you're cool just the way you are. Your body believes in you. So when you're like, no, I think I need to lose 10 pounds, your body's like, we actually disagree. We think you're good. We think you're good the way you are. Or if you're someone who's like, I want to gain some weight. I want to put pack on some muscle. Your body's like, actually, that's expensive. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do that for you. You're fine. You look good. Don't even worry about it. Just buy some bigger shoes. Buy some buy a bigger shirt. People will think you're bigger. So rather than rather than trying to like to to go to the gym and start spending a ton of energy like on a treadmill or something like that, because I want to make sure that you know exactly why you're doing something and what what you're signaling to your body when you do that. So for example, if you're out running a marathon, if you're getting on a treadmill, you're running, you're doing cardio, you're on a bike, this is, you know, talking about 10 plus minutes, not just like a warm up, but like as a way of getting more cardiovascular endurance, what you're going to be starting to use is the oxidative pathway. Okay. So this is a, this is a fancy way of saying your body's going to start to use oxygen for fuel. And the reason it's going to start to use oxygen for fuel is because oxygen is going to allow you to use, um, more of your muscle glycogen or spread that muscle glycogen out and use it more sparingly. Be more efficient with it because you only have a certain amount of muscle glycogen. So when you start bringing in the oxygen and you start using this chemical reaction that's using oxygen and muscle glycogen, it's like blood sugar. It's like, the, it's like you, or you use that, you take, you eat carbohydrates, they turn into blood sugar, which gives you energy. So it's just going to be a very efficient, like a slow burn. Think about just like throwing a little bit of coal on a fire. It's one of those dura logs, right? So you just throw that on there and it's going to burn. It's going to, it's going to slowly burn. It's going to give you a lot of bang for your buck because your body doesn't think running, let's burn as many calories as possible. Your body's like, hold up. Why are we running? This is hard. Let's, let's even things out. Let's smooth it out. Let's make sure that we don't spend a ton of, of energy. So we don't want to be exhausted at the end of this. We want to be, we want to be good just in case there's a bear later. We still want to have some energy. So in that case, if you think about it like this, then 
the more efficient you are at a type of cardio. So for example, think about, uh, think about an elliptical. The, this is the most efficient type of cardio, right? There's no impact. You're back and forth. You have a little bit of arms with it. Your legs are going in like a circular pattern. It's really smooth. You're on a machine. It's not, it doesn't like, you can really turn that up and go really fast, right? But for the most part, it's a pretty smooth, efficient machine. Now think about the flip side of this, okay? So if like if elliptical is kind of like the most efficient type of cardio you can do, and then and on the other side is me putting you in some rollerblades, plopping you down on the beach and being like, run to the end of the beach. And you are trying to hoof it with rollerblades on through sand all the way up Pacific Beach in California. That shit is exhausting. Your body hates that. It's very inefficient cardio, right? It's the most inefficient thing you could, I could think of, really. So when you're talking about burning calories, when you're talking about doing cardio for fat loss, the number one thing you need to realize is that the more efficient you are at the movement, if you're a really good runner, then running is not good cardio for you. You need to get out those, you need to get your rollerblades out. If, if, if you're on an elliptical, it's, maybe it's a good place to start. You know, if you, if you got a lot of weight to lose, you want to put a ton of pressure on your joints. It's a, it's a great place to start, but it's not that uh, good for burning a lot of calories. So the more inefficient the movement, the more calories you're going to be burning. On the flip side of that, so, so cardiovascular training, 10 minutes plus, is going to be using the oxidative pathway, burning your muscle glycogen, because first of all, you think about this, you have to get through a thin layer of muscle glycogen to start getting to your body to start burning fat for fuel. So you have to get through that, that glycogen first, you got to get out like the, kind of the energy. That's, your, that's the carbs you've eaten over the past couple days or whatever. We need to burn through that first to get to the fat. So it's going to take you a while to do that because the oxidative pathway is going to slow down the burn of the glycogen because it wants to keep you, it wants to keep you ready for whatever the next thing is. Now on the flip side of that, when you're talking about um, exercise, resistance training, lifting weights, doing squats, lunges, things like that. Whenever you're doing something like that, you're using what's called the glycolytic pathway. And like the name kind of suggests, where it's a glycogen pathway. Where we're basically using like more glycogen to produce ATP. So it's in your, it's a uh, like part of the fuel for your mitochondria and your cells. It helps you do short bursts of activity. So think of resistance training, think of sprints. Um, so that's going to be using more glycogen to accomplish whatever result you're trying to get. So you're going to be, it's, it's a less efficient type of exercise. You know, you're generally doing it with heavier weights, but it's going to be burning more glycogen per minute, per exercise, per whatever, because you're not going to actually be doing it long enough to trigger the oxidative pathway, to trigger your body to start using oxygen for fuel. So kind of like when you're doing a resistance training workout, your body doesn't know that you're like taking a rest, doing eight reps and resting and doing eight reps and then resting. It just knows that you're working hard and then you're resting. You're working hard and then you're resting, which is kind of like a similar to a sprint, right? And sprints at the end of the day are one of the best fat loss techniques we can possibly employ. So I'm gonna actually go into three of my favorite fat loss exercises as well at the end of the, at the, towards the end of this podcast. So now that we've talked about that, so basically, Based on the science that we know of how our bodies work, cardio is great for increasing your cardiovascular capabilities, increasing your lung capacity, increasing your body's ability to use its strongest muscle, the heart, to pump, to pump blood. So that's awesome. Those are good things. It's, it also burns calories, not as many calories as doing other things, but it does. It burns some calories. Okay. So those are the things that cardio is great for. It's not great for getting in and shredding fat. It's not, it's just not. It's not the most efficient use of your time. Um, it generally will increase your, increase your appetite. So when you're in the gym, you only have like 30 minutes to do a workout. That's not the way you want to go. Unless you're like in a recovery phase, you just did two hard workouts back to back. In that case, also cardio can be great. It can help you get a little bit more blood flow. It can remove some of that nitrogen or lactic acid, as we call it. So it's going to help you recover better from those weight training workouts. So cardio is not the enemy. It's not bad. A lot of weight people who are like heavy into weight training will tell you don't ever do cardio. It's stupid. I just want you to know the rules. I want you to know what cardio does and why it does it. So that way you can choose. Today's a cardio day for me. I want to do a kind of a rest and recover day. That's great. Go ahead. But just don't, don't tell me, hey, I worked out really hard. And you're, I'm like, what would you do? You're like, I did 20 minutes in the elliptical. Boo. I don't care about that. Okay. So. If we know that resistance training is better for burning fat, what's the best type of resistance training? So now let's again take an example of, I've, I've used this example many times before, but like let's say you're out in the, in the Jurassic time period, okay? And you and your best friend, you guys are harvesting berries and looking for some, like maybe some apples or something like that. And all of a sudden it's a velociraptor. It's like, and it's like chasing you guys. So 
what do you do right now to stay alive? Velociraptor out of nowhere, you're like, clever girl. You're like, <laughs> so you start running, right? You start sprinting. You're sprinting top speed. All of a sudden, you're like jumping over stuff. You're like, you're like the Michael Phelps of land. Like, who is that? Like, you're like the Usain Bolt of running away from dinosaurs. That's who you are in this moment. So you're, you're sprinting, you're jumping, you're diving, and then you're, uh, finally you're like, oh, let's climb a tree. You're getting up a tree as fast as you can. So you're like climbing up, you're pulling yourself up. Now, what do all those activities have in common? Well, number one, they're all gonna help keep you from being eaten. Hopefully you're faster than your friend Grog, and then, you know, like, RIP, bless up. But also what, what those things have in common is we're moving our body through space. We're doing body weight exercise in that moment, okay? We're sprinting. We're trying to push ourselves, propel ourselves as fast as we possibly can. We're jumping, we're out like we're explosively moving. And then we're pulling ourselves up. We're lifting, we're pulling, we're driving ourselves with our body weight. We're moving our body weight from point A to point B. And mostly, most of the time, as explosively as we possibly can. So now let's think about this from a physiological perspective. Now our bodies have not gotten the memo that velociraptors are pretty much non-existent, okay? Pretty much don't have to worry about velociraptors. I've been to Sprouts a bunch of times, never seen a velociraptor there, never had to sprint around like the produce section. So I think we're pretty much good there, but our bodies don't realize that. Our bodies know stress, they know distress and they know eustress. They know positive stress and they know negative stress. So when you tell your body that we're under stress, your body's going to respond in kind. So your body doesn't know there's no velociraptor when you're doing your pull-ups. All it knows is if I don't pull myself up for another rep, something bad could potentially happen to me. So I need to get my ass off the ground and pick myself up with my arms to maintain my, my health, my longevity, my ability to keep breathing and keep producing podcasts. So what does it do? It responds by doing two things. Telling your body, hey, we need more muscle and strength to be able to more effectively get into this tree and save ourselves from the velociraptor. It also says, hey, we need less body fat so that we can more effectively get into this tree and save ourselves from the velociraptor. So just by doing an exercise where we're violently or explosively moving our body through space, we are able to actually trigger an evolutionary mechanism that we have that keeps us alive, keeps us protected from harm. So do you see how powerful this is? Do you see how you could use this information to your advantage? because now you know the rules or one rule of how your body operates, you can start choosing exercises that prioritize this stress response from your body if you are truly in a fat loss phase where you need to lose body fat or specifically that visceral belly fat, okay? So what are, what are besides jump, sprinting really fast, jumping over logs and climbing trees, what are some good exercises? Well, the distinction is, there's two different types of exercises in this, in this category we're gonna talk about today. There's open chain exercises and there's closed chain exercises, okay? Those are fancy ways of saying we move an object through space or we move our body through space. Open chain is bicep curls, shoulder presses, bench presses, leg press, um, lat pull downs, anything like that where you're using a dumbbell you're using a, a barbell, you're using a machine, your triceps, you're doing your biceps, you're picking something up and you are staying stationary. I'm not saying those are bad exercises, I'm just saying that you just wanna know that there's a time and a place for them. Most great fat loss programs put a big priority on closed chain exercises and have some open chain exercises, not the other way around. So if you're, on, if you're like, hey, I wanna burn some fat and your coach has you doing bench press, dumbbell row, bicep curls, tricep push downs, then you're leaving some gains on the table. You're leaving, you're leaving some of these like front, like these big chunks that you could actually be getting better results. You're just leaving those alone. You're not doing it right. Okay. So you need to amend your program slightly. So what are closed chain exercises then? Well, that's, that's a great question. And so what we're going to talk about there is that's a pull up, right? We just talked about that's a push up or any variation where you're pushing yourself away from the ground. Okay. Now a lot of people get, get hung up on this one. But also, it's a squat. Even if you're putting a bar on your back, squatting down, see you. It's coming back up. That's still a, a, bot, a closed chain exercise because regardless of the extra weight, you're still moving your body through space. So a squat is going to be a good option. A lunge is going to be a good option. Sprints are going to be a good option. Push-ups, pull-ups, anything like that where you are physically having to pick yourself up and put yourself back down. This is one reason why I love a TRX or a suspension trainer, because everything you do on there is done with your own body weight and you can manipulate the weight that you're putting on yourself based on the angle of your 
of your body in relation to the anchor point. Okay, so if you don't know what a TRX is or a suspension trainer, uh, check it out. There's a lot of information on the blog, nhtrainingsystem.com. Look up the uh, best suspension trainer exercises or best body weight exercises on there. So with that in mind, what are the top three? We'll just, we'll just go three because three is a fun number. I've seen a lot of BuzzFeed quizzes. I think a lot of people talk about talking threes or fives or nines. What are the top three exercises you can start adding in today to start getting better results in your training program. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an upper body one. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have everybody push, upper body pull, and a lower body, okay? Obviously there are awesome other exercises that I'm not gonna mention today. Like I'll just say right now, lunges are fantastic. You're probably not doing enough lunges in your program, but I'm not gonna talk about this today because I got a better one for you. Okay, so the top upper body pulling movement is gonna be a chin up, okay? And the reason I like a chin up, that's with your palms facing in, a pull up is with your palms facing out. So a chin up I like better because it, it hits the most important muscle group in a male's body, the biceps. It hits it harder than a pull up does, okay? Um, I also think that you can get more reps more easily, which is kind of fun. And especially if you're trying to get a pull up for the first time, this is gonna be an easier way to do it. All right, so first of all, if you can't do a pull up, what do you do? Start with a row on a TRX, just pull yourself up. But from there, what you wanna do is get a low bar, something that's like a Smith machine or put your barbell on a rack a little lower. Keep your feet on the ground, lower yourself down and stand back up, use your legs, okay, start there. Next step would be then jumping up, holding yourself at the top, trying to get to like 30 seconds, just holding. Next step after that would be negatives, slow negatives, down to about eight seconds down. So jump up, let yourself down, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then jump back up, doing those for sets of two, three reps, okay? Once you can do like clean negatives with like for four reps or so, you'll be able to get your first chin up, okay? So from there, you'll pull yourself up, you'll let yourself go down slowly. And then chin ups are, a, are a, uh, an exercise where if you do them more frequently, you're gonna get better results. If you try to only train them once a, once a week or once every two weeks, it's gonna be slow progress. If every single time you walk under a bar at the gym or if you have a pull-up bar in your house or something like that, and you just do one rep, you're gonna get really good really fast more reps is gonna help you get better. It's like swinging a golf club, okay? It's a new movement, you gotta teach your body how to do it. So if you only swung a golf club like once a week, you're not gonna improve that fast. So the more, the more high quality reps you can get of a chin up or a pull up, it's gonna make your life easier, it's gonna make it better, and you're gonna get more, more reps quickly. The upper body push exercise that I like best, it's called an archer push up. okay? This is right in between a regular push up and a one arm push up. So if you can't do 20 regular push ups, do not proceed, do not pass go, do not start on your archer push-ups because what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that all, every, your whole body's working as a unit. You don't have that humping the ground type of mentality where your low back is, is flexed out and it feels uncomfortable. You wanna make sure that your core is firing, your glutes are on, your quads are on. This is a full body exercise push-up is, okay? And then don't, also just as a, as a caveat, don't do push-ups for your knees. Number one, those are not called girl push-ups. Those are just called bad push-ups. So don't do them for your knees because you lose so much of the core element and the lower body stuff that comes into a great push-up. Rather than that, start off on a bench, on a wall, on a bar with your body at a 45 degree angle. Get strong there and then drop that and then drop it and then drop it. Now you're on the ground. Now you're doing your regular push-ups. And then after you finish that, you're like, I got 20. I'm no problem. I'm a beast. Let's go. What we're gonna do is a archer push-up where you're gonna start off with one arm to the side like this, lower yourself down so the arm comes out to the side as straight as possible, and then push back up. Then we switch sides, come down the other side, and then push back up. The straighter you can keep that straight arm, the more difficult the exercise is gonna be, the more core requirements it's gonna be, the more strength you're gonna to have to build through that shoulder, chest, and tricep, and the more body fat and belly fat you're gonna to signal to your body that you need to burn in order to not die next time you try to do an archer push-up, okay? What if you're trapped between like a, like your arm is trapped back here and you have to push a big rock off you? Your body doesn't know. Your body only knows stress. So when you start thinking like that, then we can start programming more appropriately, okay? By the way, training, tr the way you train and the way, what you do in the gym really matters. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, it's, it's all about kitchen. 80% 80, 80 of, of abs are made in the kitchen. 80% is diet. It's not, it's not. It's a lot of this is training and choosing the right training protocol, making sure that you're hitting the right exercises and you're doing them at a high level. I still don't consider myself like perfect in every ex exercise I do. I try to bring a high level of intention and focus to each time so that each time I do something, I can get a little bit better at it. I can feel it a little bit more. This is especially true for exercises where you can't see yourself in the mirror, like a chest exercise, 
like if like chest, obviously you can see, biceps you can see, abs you can see, but you can't see your back, you can't see your hamstrings, you can't see your glutes. So whenever you do an exercise like that, bring the focus, bring the intention there, okay? All right, so the upper body movements were chin-ups, archer push-ups, and then the last one I'm gonna talk about today is the number one best fat loss exercise in my estimation in the entire world, which are hill sprints, okay? Going back to the Velociraptor, we are sprinting away from that at, at an incredibly high rate of speed. So we need to make sure that we have the capability of, of running because you don't know when the zombies are coming. To be totally honest with you, the zombie apocalypse could be days away. And if you're waiting to start training that, that hill sprints, you're probably gonna get eaten. So I don't want that for you. I want you, to, I want you to be safe, stay alive. Zombies, you don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Anyways, hill sprints are gonna be a, one of the best ways of getting that fat burning mechanism to fire, as well as building a lot of muscle in the lower body, okay? Hill sprints that probably have more in common with a three rep max on your squat than they do with the light jog out in your neighborhood, okay? Now, when I say sprint, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I did a 60 second sprint, I did this. I'm like, no, you did not do a 60 second sprint because nobody can sprint sprint for 60 seconds, okay? If you can, then you weren't sprinting, period. Okay, sprints should last somewhere between 15 and 20 seconds because we're gonna be going all out. We're gonna make sure that we're really pushing. And the reason we like the hills for this is because it slows us down. If you're like me and you like, and the, like the most sprinting you've done is like rec league softball in the last like 10 years, you haven't played like organized sports or done anything really crazy, then do not just go out and just burn it up like on a track. That's a great recipe for pulling a hamstring, tearing yourself up. So we wanna make sure we start off slow and hills are a great way to do that because they put us in a better biomechanical position to run because we're kind of leaned forward on that hill. We're driving our knees up. We're really utilizing the back of our body, the glutes and hamstrings, the posterior chain, which are the bigger muscle groups anyways, to help you burn more calories. And they're going to keep you from connecting really hard with the ground with your, with your heel, your foot and ankle. So just making sure that when you're doing this, you're putting yourself in the best position possible to make the biggest gains without putting yourself in a position to hurt yourself, okay? Because nothing worse than going back and trying to get, to get healthy, to get some abs, to drop that body fat, and ending up injured for three weeks. That is so annoying, and we just do not want that. So hill sprints are better than flat ground sprints for that, okay? So pick a hill that's like between 40 and 60 yards long, meters, whatever you want, and then what you're gonna do is start off slow. Like run up it, give me about 50, 60%, the first one, okay? Walk back down, take a breath. Every time between the, between the sprints, you're not gonna run up, walk down and go again. We're gonna run up, walk down. <sighs> take a few breaths. Make sure you're recovered enough to be at at least 80, 85% to go again. And then we're gonna do it again, okay? You're shooting, what I like to do here is, is set a timer for about 20 minutes. Do as many as I can in 20 minutes at a, at a high quality and then call it in. If you can do this two times per week for 20 minutes, it's gonna do more for your fat loss than anything else you've done in the gym up to this point. Guarantee that. You wanna take the two, the twice a week hill sprint challenge? I want you to. Take that, do that two times a week for 20 minutes, report back, let me know what happened. Take before and after pictures because I guarantee you'll look different, okay? So are squats a good example of a close chain exercise? Yes. Are lunges? Yes. Are body weight rows? Yes. Are other different exercises that, that kind of belong in that same camp. Of course, there's a lot that I did not even cover right now. So don't come at me being like, hey, you didn't even talk about handstand pushups. Yeah, well, handstand pushups are pretty inaccessible for a lot of people. So here's some really good ones that you can start doing and continue to work up to as you build up your strength in the gym. If you want more information on how to structure a detailed program, if you're just like, hey, just, just put me in coach, just tell me what to do, hit me up. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash groups slash optimal self. That's the million dollar body group. That's going to be a great place to connect with other like-minded people and also see some of the top level programming and training tips that I put out on a weekly basis. Otherwise, uh, make sure you're in that million dollar body group. You can check that out at the address I just gave or the, at the web address could be n8trainingsystems.com slash group. So if you, if you want to connect, if you want to get a little bit more information, please jump in there. Otherwise, keep, um, make sure to hit like and subscribe and some other things, just whatever, whatever you do on social media, do that here as well. So hope you're having a great day. Hope this makes a, makes a lot of sense for you in terms of how to m maximize your fat loss, both in the gym and also to make the stuff that you're doing in the kitchen go even further. All right. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. We'll talk very soon. Coach Nate is out.